So we now know how to find the stability of a control system using the Raoult stability criteria. But there are some special cases. So in this video we'll be discussing about the second special case in the case of finding the stability of a control system using the Raoult Hurwitz criteria. My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So the second case for the purpose of finding the stability using the Raoult criteria is when all the elements of a particular row is zero. That is the second special case while finding the stability of a control system using the Raoult stability criteria. So here let us find the stability of a particular control system given by this particular characteristic equation which is s raised to 6 plus 2 s raised to 5 plus 8 s raised to 4 plus 12 s raised to 3 plus 20 s raised to 2 plus 16 s plus 16 is equal to 0. So now here first let us find the Raoult array. So here the maximum power of s is 6. So here first we have s raised to 6, then we have s raised to 5, then we have s raised to 4, then we have s raised to 3, then we have s raised to 2, then we have s raised to 1 and finally we have s raised to 0. So here first the coefficient of s raised to 6 is 1. So here first we write 1. Now here taking the alternative term here the next coefficient is 8. So here we have 8. And now here again taking the alternative term we have 20 over here like this and again taking the alternative term we get 16 over here. Next the coefficient of s raised to 5 is taken as 2 so here we have 2. Now the alternative term here is 12 so here we have 12. The next alternative term is 16 so here we have 16. And next there is no alternative sum so here we can take it as 0. So now here let us find this element. In order to find this element first we multiply 2 with 8 and then 12 with 1. So 2 and 8 is 16. So here 16 minus 12 divided by 2 which is 4 by 2 which is 2. So here this element is 2. So similarly finding the next element over here first we have 2 into 20 minus 16 into 1 divided by 2. So that is 40 minus 16 divided by 2 which is equal to 12. So here this element is also 12. And next finally finding this element we have 2 into 16 minus 0 into 1 divided by 2. So 2 into 16 is 32 which is equal to 16. So here we have 16 and here we have 0. So now here now finding the element of this particular row what we observe is that we get 2 into 12 minus 2 into 12 by 2 that is here we have 0. Here 2 into 16 minus 2 into 16 so here we have 0. Here 2 into 0 minus 2 into 0 so here also we have 0. So here all the terms have become 0. So that arises a contradiction. This can't be solved using any way we know whatsoever. So here when we are faced with such kind of a situation now is when we use a particular equation referred to as the auxiliary equation. So we have to form an auxiliary equation. So here it is this row in which all the terms are zero. So therefore in order to find the auxiliary equation we have to consider the row right above this particular row. So here the maximum coefficient of s is s raised to 4 and here we have to take these coefficients that is 2, 12 and 16. This is very simple guys. So the first term of the auxiliary equation would be 2s raised to 4. So here we have 2s raised to 4 plus here we have 12. So this is 12. And now here this is the alternative term. So the alternative term after s raised to 4 is s raised to 2. So here we have 12s raised to 2 plus this is 16. So here we have 16 and now the next alternative term is a constant. So therefore here this is s raised to 0 which is 1. So therefore this is equal to 0. So therefore this is the auxiliary equation that we now obtain. So now if this is the auxiliary equation a of s, now what we have to find is dA of s by dS. So dA of s by dS can be obtained as here by taking the derivative of this we would get 8s raised to 3 plus 24s plus derivative of a constant is 0. So therefore this is the derivative of this particular equation a of s given by dA of s by ds. So now, now is the interesting part. All we have to do now is that 
where there is zero we can now replace these zero terms with these coefficients that is the first coefficient would be 8 and now the second coefficient would be 24 and now this becomes 0 and 0 so now we will take 8 into 12 minus 24 into 2 divided by 8 this we would obtain it as 6 and now here we will have 8 into 16 minus 2 into 0 divided by 8 which we obtain it as 16 itself and now in order to find this particular term we just take 6 into 24 minus 16 into 8 divided by 6 which is 2.67 and here we have 0 and now finally in order to find this term all we have to do is multiply 2.67 to 16 minus 6 into 0 divided by 2.67 which is 16. So here we have 16. So here all we have to have is the first particular terms of this particular matrix like this. So now all we have to do is see if there are any sign changes. So here first we have plus 1. So here this is positive. Now we have 2. This is positive. This we have 2. This is positive. Here we have 8. This is positive. Here we have 6. This is positive. Here 2.6 this is positive. Here 16. This is positive. So here all these are positive and therefore Therefore, we have no sign changes in the first term over here. This implies that there are no roots of this particular characteristic equation lying on the right half of the S plane. So this thus states that the control system given by this particular characteristic equation is a stable control system. This is a stable control system because, because there are no sign changes here, it indicates that there are no roots lying on the right half of the S plane, indicating that this particular control system is a stable control system. So writing it down, we have no sign change over here. So because we have no sign change over here, there are no roots in the right half of the S plane. And because of this, this particular control system is a stable control system. So this does is simply the second special case for the purpose of finding the stability of a particular control system using the Routh criteria. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can find the stability of a control system using the Routh stability criteria when all the elements of a particular row are zero. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.